Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. On their woodwind instruments, Khan used an unusual system for their pivot screws. Here's the pivot screw. There's the cylindrical end, and that is the end that the key pivots on. And then there's the threaded portion. There are actually two threaded portions there and there. And in the middle, that is smooth. And that is so you can put a locking screw in the post and lock the screw into place after you get it to where it needs to be. This is the very small locking screw that locks the pivot screw into place. Here's the pivot screw. It screws into the post just like a normal pivot screw would. And you screw it in up to where it needs to go. Then you take the tiny little locking screw and put it in the side of the post and screw that into place. And that locks in the pivot screw. So if you want to take the pivot screw out, first you would turn the locking screw out a few turns and then you would take out the pivot screw. If you try to take the pivot screw out before you turn the locking screw, you can do damage to the pivot screw and it will have a hard time coming out anyway. Con clarinets also have this locking system. You can see that there's a hole on the side of the post and that means that it uses the same locking system. Because these screws are so small, they often get lost. On the saxophone that I'm working on, it has six of those locking screws and they were all there. Clarinets have nine of those locking screws and on this clarinet, there were only six. Several years ago, I put a lot of eight of those locking screws on eBay. I started the bid at one dollar and there were several bids on it and by the time the bids ended, the eight tiny little locking screws sold for $108. So if you are looking for those screws, there are two inexpensive ways to get them. You can buy a clarinet, like this clarinet, it has a broken joint on it. So this one is pretty much worthless. So this clarinet has six of those locking screws. So you could buy a clarinet like this on eBay very inexpensively. And then you would have six of those locking screws that you can use. And the locking screws on clarinet are very similar to the ones on saxophone. They're just a tiny little bit shorter, but they will still work for saxophone. So if you get a clarinet, you can use those locking screws on a saxophone. However, you cannot use the pivot screws from a clarinet on a saxophone, but you can use the locking screws. Another way to get the locking screws is to make them yourself, and they are not that hard to make. These are all the tools you'll need to do the job. You need a jeweler's saw with a fairly fine blade. I'm using a number two jeweler's saw blade. And then you'll need a number 164 die. And I got that out of my set of taps and dies right here. And number 164 is the size that will fit the saxophones and the clarinets. You will also need a hinge rod, a small one, approximately 75 thousandths of an inch. You can measure it on a micrometer to see that it's about that size. It can be a little bigger or a little smaller, but approximately that size. And you can get these off of a junk clarinet if you need to. And then you will also need a small file. Using a bench motor to do this job, you do not need a bench motor, but it does help a lot. I'm putting the hinge rod into the bench motor. I'm using a hinge rod. You do not need to use a hinge rod. You can use other types of round metal, but a hinge rod does work well, and I have several of them. I'm going to start by using the jeweler's saw, and I'm going to cut a slot for the screwdriver in the hinge rod. There may already be a slot there, and if there is, then you do not need to cut a slot in there. You cut a slot by starting at a diagonal, and then once you get started, you turn it so that you're right on center. The slot does not need to be that large, so just cut a small slot in it. After you've cut the slot, you're going to need to pull it out a little bit so that the die can get at it. Now I'm going to put the die over the hinge rod and you do not use the bench motor under power. You just use your hand to turn it. And I turn it like three times and then back it off. And what that does is it cuts the chunks of metal that are being cut off the thread. And that gives you a better cut. If I want to make one of these screws, I'm not going to thread it very far, but if I want to make several, I'm just going to thread it down quite a bit, and then I will just cut out several at one time. I've cut the threading to make several of these screws, so I'm going to back that off now. Okay, there it is. 
Now I'm going to use a jeweler saw blade to cut it. So I'm going to line it up with my finger so that it's the right size and get it started. And then I'm going to take a magnet and put it right underneath it. That's so that it will not get lost when it cuts through. There we go. There is the locking screw. And now to make the next one, I'm going to file this so that it's smooth. Then I'm going to cut the slot in the head of the screw. Then line up the jeweler saw to where it needs to be. And then cut it. And then put the magnet on there so it does not go flying when it cuts through. And there is the next screw. Now there's just one thing left to do. Take the tiny little screw and put it in the bench motor if you can safely without losing it. You do not want to tighten the chuck too tightly or it will smash the threading on that tiny little screw. Make sure that the end with the slot in it is facing in and the other side needs to be facing out. Here are the locking screws, and in the course of only a few minutes, I made five of them. And these are not hard to make if you have a few of the right tools. I hope this video has been helpful. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos, and look in the description below for links to where you can get these tools.